with Alex Stewart preferred to Jack Russell behind the stumps and the all-rounder Dermot Reeve making his second international appearance. Well, New Zealand won the toss, they chose to bat and the first ball was De Freitas to John Wright. Best possible start for New Zealand, Sir Richard. Well, it certainly is, and I think it's a very important toss to win too, actually, because this pitch is going to be low and slow, and I think it's going to be harder to score runs in the second innings. Therefore, it's very important for New Zealand to score uh, a very good uh, total. They can get to 220 and make them very, very competitive, and that'll make it difficult uh, for England. Yes. And here's the first run for Rod Latham, pushes it out square on the offside, so he's underway. And the crowd really filling up as news of New Zealand winning the toss and batting. And the prospect of Rod Latham and John Wright, Martin Crowe, Andrew Jones against the English attack. Runs for Latham, might be the first boundary. It is. Looking at a short ball, and the news back at Eden Park is not good for New Zealand because the first ball of the new over, bowled by Lewis, a short ball, John Wright had a flick at it, a rather tentative flick, and it carried through to Stewart, the keeper, so Wright has gone, the first wicket taken, here it is, Lewis bowling. Yes, we'll find that it certainly nips away a little, but it is always wide, and Wright goes after it. Just a little too wide for him, not quite getting across to it, taking the outside edge. And John Wright, 28 deliveries for his six runs. Wright getting out here, and he just gets a bottom edge, knows it as he sees the ball carrying straight through to Alex Stewart. And the first wicket falling for New Zealand in the eighth over, 28 for one. New Zealand winning the toss, batting first. Over the top goes Latham, that's a good hit. Nice bold shot by Rod Latham. His second boundary of the morning, and New Zealand a 31 for one. Latham lays back. That's a lovely shot. Four runs to Rod Latham. His third boundary of the day, and it's 37 for one. through the onside by Martin Crowe this time. They might look for a third run here. They're really putting pressure on the field and they've done well. That's good running. They fairly haired up and down the track. Oh, now to peel and he's out. Given out. Umpire Doug Cowie raises the finger. The second New Zealand wicket has fallen. Well, he was across that, wasn't he? He was looking to play it away to leg, I thought. He was coming forward, though. Yes, Derek Pringle, the bowler. Rod Latham, the batsman. Let's have a look at the line of this. It landed about off stump. Coming forward looks pretty reasonable. I think that was a good decision. Yes. So New Zealand, 45 for two. by Alex Stewart, the keeper. It was a thin, orthodox catch, but he took it well. And, of course, that's the sort of wicket that will come in this one-day cricket, looking to open the face and run it to third man. Yes, Andrew Jones, anxious to get the score underway, pushing forward, just getting a little touch there. Alex Stewart up over the stumps, did very well, didn't deviate too much, straight into the gloves. So New Zealand in trouble at 51 for three. And Gooch there, deciding to bring Tufnell in at a a good time for England. Well played by Martin Crowe. Oh, a bit of sloppy work down there. Pringle not really distinguishing himself there, giving the chance for Crowe to extend the runs from the certain one.
to three. Jack Russell and Mickey Stewart. Jack Russell, the frontline keeper. Ropech gets off the mark. One to him, it's 55 for three. Ropech goes high, wide, and out. Graham Hick loitering under the southern stand. Waited for it, it was coming straight to him. And great patch, flicking the ball off his hips. Straight in the air, straight to the fielder. No chance for any reprieve. Well, certainly the shot was on, but the batsman must always have a mental picture in his mind as to where the fielders are. And he would have known there was a man out there. Well, here's the wicket. This is where great patch went out. And Hick, you can see, he had no difficulty at all. It was always coming to where he was. He didn't have to go and chase it, didn't have to search for it. So New Zealand, 61 for four. Great batch. Caught Hick, bowled Reeve for four. Reeve's second wicket. Oh, what a shot. Beautiful shot from Crow. The most authoritative of the shot we've seen from Martin Crow in the innings. Yeah, it's lovely back, back cut there, shot of a length, one of his favourite shots. Dermot Reeve probably not concentrating quite as well as he has been doing. He's a little worried about that knee, the ball before, which he was worried about. He obviously thought he'd hurt it. He's rubbing it at the moment, is Dermot Reeve. He's got to get his concentration back together because he's done so well. This one goes much finer, down towards third man, and four more. So Martin Crowe takes his second boundary of the over. The first one was the first boundary in 13 overs, and now we have two in a row. Harris has his first round. So 10 runs off that over, bowled by Reeve, and uh, New Zealand 75 for four. New Zealand just battling a wee bit. Over rate of 2.7 at the moment. Oh, caught and roll chance put down. Harris beaten in the air by Tufton, who couldn't hold the return catch. Yeah, it's lovely flight here from Philip Tufnell. Drew the batsman down the pitch. He didn't get there, didn't young Harris, and then he finished up pushing through, and he should have caught that. A simple caught and bowl. 79 for four. Tufton now. Oh dear me, could be a run out and a mix up. England got it wrong. Harris got it wrong initially. England couldn't complete the run out. Well, it's a real mix up here, but it was a poor throw from uh, Fairbrother. He was in quickly to his favourite hand, his left hand. He's a left handed thrower, and that really was a wild throw. He'd been well out with the batsman. Oh, yeah. That was bowling. Straight through Martin Crow. And that's a big blow for the Englishman. The New Zealand captain is out, bowled by Reeve for 33 in his last over. And New Zealand 81 for five. Well, it's no great shot here from Martin Crow. He plays the sort of half stride down the pitch and then plays slightly across the line of the ball as it keeps a bit low on him. Look at that front foot. It's only gone about 12 inches out of the batting crease. And the New Zealand captain out for 33. Well, that's out, isn't it? So Martin Crow departs, having made 33, and New Zealand in terrible strife, really. 81 for five in the 31st over. And that's runs for Chris Ken's good-looking shot. A little short on the offside, clipped away square, and a long run for Derek Pringle. Won't quite make the boundary. Chris Cairns comes back for four, so well run. <laughs> oh, good one there, wasn't it? Yes, good shot. And that uh, not quite through to the boundary, a reasonably short one over there in front of the number one stand. But a good shot from Chris Cairns, getting up on his back foot and punching it away through the offside. Here's another run. 
which brings up the 100. Error to Cairns goes big, high, wide and dead straight. De Freitas, the ball. Big hit again from Cairns. And he could be out, no. Cairns facing at the moment. Away he goes again, in the air. And it falls away this time from Robin Smith. Harris swings it away. Beautiful shot. up at the end of 46 overs and we have four overs remaining and here's Chris Lewis Harris has dropped their brother puts him down well it looks straight forward enough he's on 42 oh he's got hold of that one he could be out though Yes, he's caught Graham yeah, he doesn't miss kick those. out there. So Chris Cairns, very fine innings, comes to an end as he leaves Eden Park. Out, caught Graham Hick in the deep. Bowl Pringle for 42. So New Zealand's sixth wicket has fallen. Yes, it, it, it can go anywhere when you slog in the closing stages. Bad luck, he should pick him. Didn't hit it too badly. It's probably the longest boundary on the park but it was straight down the throat of Graham Hill. So there we are, 165 for six. Good shot to get off the mark. Ian Smith clips it away through mid-wicket. They'll come back for a very comfortable two. So Ian Smith on the board, and he'll really go after it, as we've just been saying. 167 now for six. Lewis again. Could be out, he is, he's caught. Gooch in in a short cover position, jumps high, just knocked it in the air, but it came down very safely. So Ian Smith's short innings is over. Obviously having to go after the bowling, Ian Smith giving himself a little bit of room, hitting it hard, it was a full P, but aimed directly at him, and Graham Gooch was able to drag it in. So 167 for seven. right at the legs of Pringle and they're going to try for two here and I think they'll get it yes very comfortable in the end good running it is always extraordinary isn't it up until the 45th over they would never have attempted a second run there then they now they do attempt it and get it with ease yes that's right it's, it's always it. extraordinary isn't it interesting looking shot from Pringle straight down the ground wasn't played quite that way but another two, so we're down to the last ball of this innings. And this has been quite a fruitful over for New Zealand. So the last ball of the New Zealand innings. Pringle on his way. He's hit this one out on the onside. Hicks in very quickly. They will try for two. It'll be a struggle. Not out, says umpire Steve Woodward. So two more to the total. Well run by these two. But it drags New Zealand's score through to 178. So not a bad result after a pretty dodgy middle order collapse. But New Zealand 178 for seven off their 50 overs, which was a comparatively modest England target. Cairns the top scorer uh, and a very good England bowling performance. Phil Tufnell just 17 runs off his 10 overs. But the top performer, Dermot Ree, three for 20. And England's reply with 179 the target. You can see that after the one o'clock news with the sound problems sorted out, I can assure you. For the first time, they had Graham Hick as an opening partner for Graham Gooch. We join it in the second over, England three without loss, and it's Chris Pringle bowling to Gooch. Well, that's through. That's a lovely shot. And 
and it's four runs, so the first boundary is taken as Pringle straight outside the off stump. And Hicks, Maxim away, Gooch it is, and England seven without loss. Short and wide, and we know what's going to happen with that. Edge. Oh, and it's gone straight through. It fell well short of the player at first slip. But it should have been fielded. And it's finished up as a four. Yes, well, he just opened the blade a little on that. Didn't commit himself fully, as I had indicated earlier. But the ball did fall well short of slip. And it's an awkward one for a slip to get in behind it. When it falls short, you're there really for the catch. Gooch plays freely through the onside. That's a beautiful shot. Out through mid-wicket. And Graham Gooch, a man in an obviously in form, hits his second boundary. Third, in fact. That is 21 without loss. Well, he's showing, too, that if you bowl it close into his pads, he's very capable of clipping it through the onside. Good all-round player. Too short, too wide, four runs. Super time shot this, a short of the length, clubs it away with his right hand. Beautiful timing. Both these batsmen in good touch, confidence up. They have runs already this season. Well, runs again. Pringle's going to race around, but he'll miss it. Once again, beautifully angled, controlled shot from Graham Hick. Yes, yeah, you can see a little bit of the out seam here and Hick opening the back face, it running away quite safely on the floor and running very quickly indeed. As he just judged the pace of the ball beautifully, he was on the front foot and he had all his weight over it. You can see he's got 405 written on his bat. 405 represents Graham Hick's top score. Well bowled Morrison, but well run Graham Gooch. McLar um, Lacey McLaren's score. This Gooch. Latham a big chase, they've run one. But no need to worry, it's four. That really raced. The end of the fifth over, England are racing at 38 without loss. The England 50 coming up in the eighth over. A lovely shot, magnificent shot, effortless shot. <laughs> Cairns bowling a new over, and once again, pick in runs. Good looking shot from Hick, just over pitching a little and straying a little down the leg side, Cairns, and Hick very quick to cash in. Certainly the opportunity has have to be there before you can score off them. Oh, he's bowling! Well, Chris Cairns straight through Graham Hick, stumps all over the place, and the first England wicket has fallen. Well, we were just having a little crack at uh, perhaps the New Zealand bowlers, Chris Cairns coming into the attack, and what a fine delivery. It was the perfect Yorker, wasn't it, as far as I can see? Absolutely there. I mean, it and he was looking to hit it in the same place. It was that much shorter. A fine delivery, certainly. But nonetheless, we are only in the 11th over, and it's 64 for one. But it's Cairns now to Robin Smith. Chris Cairns, the man of the moment, on his way to Robin Smith. Good-looking shot to open his innings, and what a fine shot. He timed it even better than I thought, and straight through to the cover boundary. More runs, four in fact. 
very short boundary down there to the number one stand. Straying down the leg side a little Chris Cairns had just clipped away behind square. I tell you what, Mystery, no ball has been better timed all day than this one. Look at the speed it went across the ground. Amazing. So there are runs and wickets in this over. Unfortunately for New Zealand, only one wicket. Good looking shot from Gooch. Pushed away through mid wicket. A long chase for Chris Harris. Nothing edgy, snicky, or dangerous about that, was there? In fact, that outfield was uh, rather faster than I thought. Well, all Gooch timed the, better, the ball rather better than we thought. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Whipped away by Robin Smith. Beautiful timing. And the ball sails across the boundary line once again. That's a fourth boundary for Smith. Bit of width that time, and it's clubbed away to the fence by Robin Smith. Outside the off stump and rather too wide, and Smith just smacks it away to the fence for four. And up comes the hundred at the end of the 17th over. Harris bowls to Gooch, and he launches into a big hit. And that's a fine stroke from Graham Gooch. Takes him up to 47. And he's out. Caught by Mark Greatbatch. And Gooch is out to rather a strange looking shot. And is dismissed for 47. Well, if we watch this one, we'll see that it was too full and Gooch changed his mind. He was going to whop it over wide of mid on, as we saw earlier in the over. See how he gets across there, goes for it and then stops and spooned it up, although briskly, into Mark Greatbatch at short mid wicket. And the second wicket now has gone down for England. Oh, it's a big shot from Lamb. Didn't use his feet much, didn't have to. Once again, Harris getting through the first ball very quickly indeed. And Alan Lamb gets a ball which is outside off stump. And he thumps it through extra cover. Yes, Chris Harris giving Alan Lamb too much width outside off stump. About a foot and a half outside. You can't do that at what is a very medium, medium slow pace that he bowls. He's got to ball a tight line just outside off stump. Two boundaries to land, both on the offside. He's going to be out, though. He's caught. Close got him. Harris has his second wicket. Lamb driving in the air. Caught by Crow at extra cover. Lamb out for two. England, uh, 123 for three. Well, I did say about Alan Lamb, he's not a very good starter. You watch the feet movement. Not much feet movement, just a little shuffle forward. He's not really got that left foot forward, he's not over the ball, he can't keep it down. And it's a simple tumbling catch for Martin Crow. So Lamb out for 12, it's 123 for 3 in the 25th over. Neil Fairbrother comes out to start his innings, and he's coming out at number 5 through Lamb. Going tell out. Lamb, his body, his head, his back, it's not into the shot. And he just scoops the ball up for an easy, simple catch. He plays a lot of butter hand, he clubs the ball. That sort of style of play has been very effective on the faster, bouncier, truer pitches, but on the slow pitches in New Zealand, the ball keeping low will make it very difficult for Alan Lund. There's the man of the moment, Alex Stewart, who does everything except open the bowling. Yes, he seems to have had a crack at most things. He flicks it away on the leg side. It was a bit uppish for a moment, but it's beaten the field. Andrew Jones, a long chase, but to no avail. So four more to the total. Yes, a yard to further to the right, and that would have been out, wouldn't it? That's the equation, and really, with seven wickets in hand, that's the crucial figure. It really shouldn't pose England any great problem. All swung away, got hold of this one, and... It's six runs. Well, he's, he's very strong in the forearm, isn't he, Robin Smith? Yes. There was not much backlift, but he hit that like a kicking horse. 
and of course it was it was a medium pace long hop. He got what he asked for. He was just a little short, and on a slow wicket that stood up and said, "Hit me." And Robin Smith obliged. He's quick onto the shot, and as you say, very punchy, isn't he? Oh yes. I think now any chance New Zealand had of causing a remarkable breakthrough it really is all gone. Well, that runs it off the edge, but of course fair enough in one-day cricket. The four runs again. Danny Morrison trying, diving valiantly. Oh, lucky, but there are no slips. And therefore, you can take the chance. Exactly. Actually, poor old Danny Morrison. He ran a long way, dived, and got a hand to it, and still went for four. So Gavin Larson is taking a bit of stick in this over. He's, he's into his ninth over. 32 runs he's conceded without a wicket. Well, this one swung away again. This could be six more. No, it's inside the boundary. But a very comfortable four. So, Robin Smith, there's his 50. And what a fine 50 it's been. And the new over. Good shot from Fairbrother through the covers. And that'll that run away. Stroke? I mean, he just leant into it. It's all timing. I mean, it's sort of stroke that had Jeffrey Boycott licking his lips with envy in the box behind. You, you, can't, you can't lick a more, a, more, a more notable pair of lips than that. Just leaning forward into it. And it was all timing. We saw the brute power of Robin Smith, and this was really a beautiful time shot. Oh, lovely. Perfect. Oh, this is over the top of the only slip who's there, Mark Greatbatch, but well over the top, and it races away for four. And I would think if you play it consistently, the edge could become quite a profitable source of income. Well, certainly. And I'm not suggesting it for a purist like you. Fuller and another good shot. Square of the wicket on the offside. Well timed off here, brother. Wasn't much movement in the bat, but it just raced away for four. So the English really cleaning this up in style at the moment. Oh, beautiful shot. Magnificent shot from Robin Smith. He really is a player in form. A tenth boundary for Smith. And it's 169 now for three. Just watch the close. Poise stroked it and didn't move at all. Just watch here how he plays the shot. Knew that it was always four. But this has been a commanding performance by England. He's even got 178 for seven. It was never really enough. So it's been proven again with and away goes Smith again. And this is another boundary. Square of the wicket on the offside. Another lovely shot. And England six runs away from victory and Smith goes to 61 it's 173 for three Fair brother hits it away through the covers there's four of the five runs required so the scores are now tied beautifully timed again Fair brother looks as though he's putting no effort at all into these shots Yes, it's pretty lonely out there when you're skipper or even as a player. If you're going down easily, you have to suffer as 11 people. Whereas if you're losing batting, of course, there's only two of you out there to suffer. And that's uh, no ball, so that's the end of it. It's all over. Danny Morrison finishes with a no ball, and the game is all over. Yes, England winners in comprehensive fashion with just over 16 overs to spare. That's a check on how the bowlers performed uh, in that innings. And uh, good-looking form from Robin Smith with that unbeaten 61. And uh, Dermot Reeve, that's three for 20 earlier on. Well, the second... One.